I bet you've never heard of this microphone or heard of Sontronics, or maybe you have. The reason I say that is because you won't find a single dedicated review of this microphone on YouTube, and I really don't know why. This is a mic that I have coveted for some time and I have finally bought it, so I hope you now enjoy the first review of the Sontronics STC2 Large Diaphragm Cardioid Condenser Microphone on YouTube. So if you're listening carefully to my intro, you would have heard that I've said there has been no dedicated reviews on YouTube. So that implies that there are some reviews featuring this microphone on YouTube. That is true. You will see a few videos where it's put up against other well-known microphones and a head-to-head -head comparison test, but never for spoken word and always for singing and never with any real detail in the review like you will see on so many other popular mics. So anyway, let's back up a little and I'm going to give you some backstory on Sontronics and also why I wanted this microphone. Sontronics was founded back in 2005 and their headquarters are based in Dorset in the south coast of England. Their lineup consists of 18 microphones, two preamps and also accessories. They offer a lifetime guarantee on all their microphones. And while some of their microphones have just recently changed to be manufactured in Shanghai, the majority are still made in the UK along with all of their metal parts and every Sontronics microphone, regardless of where it's been made, is thoroughly tested and checked right here in the UK before ever being shipped out. So why did I want this mic? Well, it's made by a British company and has a lifetime warranty, which is outstanding. It also has a really classy look about it and it's always had really good written reviews from people who have bought it. And also because it has had no dedicated reviews on YouTube, no voiceover recordings to my knowledge anyway. And because of this, I was intrigued all the more. And that just heightened my need to have this mic and also to be the first to do a dedicated review on it. Maybe, just maybe, I've discovered a hidden gem. That was my thinking anyway. I have plugged it into my Moto M2 audio interface and I've set the gain to around about 2 o'clock and if I've boosted it, make sure to check on screen now. Anyway, this mic retails for £169 and has the following specs. Right, so you pop the top of the box and this is what you get. You get a very, very nice flight case to keep it safe when travelling. You also get a shock mount and some replacement rubber bands. Now this shock mount is completely made of metal and is sturdy and is going to last. And you also get some documentation and also instructions on how to register for your outstanding lifetime guarantee. Right, let's now have a closer look at the mic. Now it's an all metal design and is very sturdy and well made indeed. It also has a good weight to it but it's not heavy at 631 grams. The grill is also metal and is solid. I mean really solid so if I try and push it it will not bend. At the front of the microphone there are two switches. One is a minus 10 dB switch which can be used in very loud environments so that it will not clip or distort and the other is a 75 Hz filter. This can be used to cut out hum from a constant bass source like a noisy air conditioner or so I've been led to believe. At the front it has the very attractive Sontronics logo. The shock mount is also very sturdy as I previously mentioned and is entirely made of metal and it really is solid, it is not flimsy in any way shape or form. This in my opinion is made to last and basically if you bought this microphone you could still be using it in 20 years time. All in all, really, it is a very attractive looking microphone. Now the shock mount does not have a pop filter attachment, but if that is needed, you can always purchase one online or you can purchase the STC20, which is basically the same microphone, but comes with all the accessories you need to start from scratch, including a pop filter. You just don't get the flight case. Okay, enough talking for me. Let's get into the testing. Right, so I'll now do a plosive test. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled piper. 
Peter Piper picked. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. I'll now do the plosive test with the pop filter attached. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. Peter Pep Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. <laughs> I'm now going to get really close up into the microphone and do a proximity test and this is how it sounds. And just to let you know, this is how it sounds in a basically treated room. So I have got some, some sound absorption panels in this room. And I'm now recording in an untreated room. So uh, you should hear a little bit more echo. Uh, anyway, this is how it sounds speaking in an untreated room. It should feel a little bit more echoey. Hmm. I'm now going to speak around the microphone. This is me speaking 75 degrees to the left of the microphone. I'm now speaking directly onto the microphone. And this is me now speaking 75 degrees to the right of the microphone. I'm now speaking directly behind the microphone. This is how it sounds at 10% gain level. This is how it sounds at 25% gain level. This is how it sounds at 50% gain level. This is how it sounds at 75% gain level. And this is how it sounds at 100% gain level. Wow, you really can hear it every and I will now speak to you so you can hear the sound floor with the gain set about 60%, which is a reasonable level so it will not clip. This is how it sounds with the 75 hertz filter engaged. And this is how it sounds with the negative 10 dB engaged and also the 75 hertz filter engaged. I've now removed the pop filter and this is, gives you an idea of what it's like without a pop filter but I am speaking at a 45 degree angle to the microphone. This is me now speaking a little bit further back. This is maybe about 90, about 9 inches, maybe 6, 7 inches maybe uh, away from the microphone. Now hitting the desk, I'm now going to hit the keys of the keyboard. I am now speaking directly into the neat Bumblebee microphone which retails about a hundred pounds, so significantly less than the Sontronics. I have got the pop filter attached and the gain is set at exactly the same, round about 60%. This is me now speaking directly into the Rode NT-USB microphone. This microphone uh, retails for about 130 pounds, which is about 30 pounds less than the Sontronics and about 30 pounds more than the Bumblebee, although you do not need to buy an audio interface as this is a USB microphone and which you can plug directly into your computer. And this is how it sounds. Right, so this is the part in the microphone review when normally the reviewer gives their opinion on the microphone. Well, I can't really do that because I don't have enough experience with reviewing mics and I'm not sufficiently educated audio-wise. I don't possess any audio qualifications or have any experience in a professional audio studio. Uh, basically, my ears aren't trained enough to know what to listen for uh, when it comes to the fine details of what makes one microphone superior to another. All I know is what I like and what I think sounds good to my ears. So 
well, basically it's up to you whether you like the sound of and the tone and whether it'll be a good fit for your voice. I personally like how my voice sounds when I speak into this mic. Uh, I have a bit of bass to my voice and it sounds better to me than, for example, the Neat King B. I feel that comes across as a bit boomy for my taste. I prefer this. <laughs> If I had to say the pros, I would say um, I don't hear much sibilance in my voice, which is the S's and the high parts. Um, I think it does a good job of rejecting them. Um, like I say, I've, I've not trained, so I'm really not that sure. I like the shock mount. Uh, I think it does a really good job at rejecting knocks on the mic or on the table. I like how it's made from all metal parts, made in UK, have the peace of mind that has a lifetime guarantee. I mean, the guarantee alone suggests to me that the manufacturers are, well, they're pretty proud of the products and, and have faith in them. I was also very happy with what I got and for the money that I paid. Um, I guess the cons, well, I've discovered that the sound floor is quite loud when I'm using the 75 hertz filter. It's not something that I'm going to be using, so it's not a problem to me. I think it could do a better job at rejecting background noise from behind the mic. Uh, the King B, for example, does a much better job of doing that, I think. So I'm going to suggest if you're going to be using this mic in an untreated room for spoken word, then you may hear more of... Um, the sound hitting off the walls and things like that. Um, on the other hand, if you're using this for singing, it could do a really good job because of that. I mean, these are just my opinions and you may have different ones. So if you own an STC2 or have an opinion yourself, please leave a comment. It'll be really interesting to hear and read uh, your opinion, especially on how well I've analysed the sound. Maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree. I really would be interested in your point of view and what you think of this mic in general. So that's it. That's my review. If you like it, please leave a like and uh, I'll see you in the next one.